Hello everyone, and today we're going to be getting into the 912 balance pass adjustments preview, and I'm pretty stoked for this balance patch. There's a lot of good stuff in here. There's my favorite unit in the game who got buffed, and if you already seen some of my previous videos, it is LAC. I just wanted to open the game there so I could go show that LAC is my favorite unit, but I probably won't include that in this video here. But let's just get straight into it. I'm going to keep it as quick and concise as possible, give a little bit of my thoughts, and okay, I keep it going. Now, there is a little bit of like mixed thoughts going around with PFLON, so I'm going to explain my thoughts of PFLON at the very end of the video instead of in order because I'm going to yap a bit about it. So I will be skipping PFLON in the first half, but I will address her at the end. So if you, if you see the mixed up order, that's the reason why. So let's get going. So everyone in this balance patch will be Judge Kise, LHC, Pirate Captain Fawn, Abigail, Alencia, Shooting Star Arcades, and the Artifacts is Otherworldly Machinery and Fan of Light and Dark. This is Ahmed's Artifact and that is Yuna's Artifact. Now let's get going to Judge Kise. So TLDR with this is that they removed the Unable to be Counterattack debuff and replaced it with Decreased Hit Chance. The Defense Break is still there and then they changed the um, Combat Readiness effect. Uh, on well they added a combat readiness effect which is the same thing as Flitica's S2 so um, the skill can also no longer be counterattacked and they changed the soul burn to 20 souls ignore ER so what this allows her to do is S2 well, it won't trigger a counterattack at all and depend, depending on how many targets it hits it will see her push her by 25% for each target so if you hit four targets, it should push her all the way up back to the front of the line so you can follow up with an S3 and reset current turn cooldowns. They also remove the, um, if there's more enemies, you do more damage and they increase the base damage to try to mitigate that effect. So of course, the amount of damage that's still there we have to test, but that is pretty much it for Jay Kisei. I think this is a good change. Uh, obviously they tried to do this unable to be counterattacked, add her to a, like a second Mook in a way, but it just wasn't working. So making her into like a pseudo self-serving um, damage dealer here will be an interesting thing. But the biggest problem with Jay Kisei is that she's really hard to gear. So we'll just make her better. Who knows? I don't play fast. I can't test her. But for sure, obviously what was hap what, what it was before was not usable. So it's a change. Test it out. Maybe it's better. Maybe it's worse. But the unable to be counterattacked on the S2 is really great because now she can freely S2 and doesn't have to even worry about a counterattack happening and then just dying. And then you can go into S3 and get invincible buff. Next up is Line Heart Sermia, and basically TLDR of this is that they just simply completely removed the Pying Spirit. When a, LAC has a lot of problems in this meta, and the biggest problem is how, how highly used C Phantom Pultus is. So because of that, LAC is straight up gutted the moment that Elvera or C Phantom Pultus comes out, and C Phantom Pultus is used a lot. This means now she's now actually able to play into that matchup and pretty much nothing else changed now you can actually do funny gaming with this now that she is on a cooldown so you can run around cool uh creative and destruction right and then s3 and then it procs and you get a second s3 <laughs> so that's plausible it is also plausible that you can rush her cooldown with laia and so on and so forth but otherwise pretty much everything is the same they did move where the combat readiness happens but it's mainly the same it's practically the same she just doesn't function with with fighting spirit anymore which is a huge buff to her because she just gets straight up just deleted by fi uh, fighting spirit counters abigail nothing much changed for her as well all they did was um for the target that's in the back row before if they reach 1 HP, now there's also a full dispel on it. So if they have like an unbuffable on them, um, maybe it's a seal, it gets completely cleansed, and then they get the mortality and vampirism. This is really good because usually if there's an unbuffable, you it procs the immortality and in vampirism, you don't get it, and one more kill to kill. One more hit to kill. So this actually means the back row unit can survive longer. The S3 also now has a baked in effectiveness buff. So like, um, just like Brig, how has free effectiveness when he S3s, this is kind of the same thing here. So it lowers the gear requirement for um, Abigail, so you have um, a higher chance to land D-break as well as strip buffs. Alencia is very insane. They changed her soul burn to 10, uh, still 10 souls, but now it's ignore ER. They increased crit chance on her S2, and when she does trample, she now increases her combat range by 15%, and Mind's Eye is now completely changed and no longer gives effectiveness, but instead the injury in the kit is moved over to 
um, is moved over to Mind's Eye. Now, this is very important because as of right now, Alencia only has, let me just bring up the game here. She only has her injury baked into um, Trample, right? So what this allows it to do when Mind's Eye is now what provides injury for Alencia is that all of her attacks will now provide injury. You get injury from the S3, you get injury from the S1, and you get injury from Trample. So that means her injury output is now increased. Now, if you combine that with a CR push, if we look at our artifact, I don't have it leveled up, but like at plus 30, it should be like 20%, right? So maybe if you have it at plus 15, it's around 15%, right? So if you combine that with this CR push, you're getting roughly a 30 to a 35% CR push on her S2. And once again, since the injury amount is increased, you can now build her faster because this also removes gear square with the crit chance. So that means you can run lower crit chance. So you can make, run her like maybe 240 speed with uh, with her max out artifact and you get these free crit chance. So you can run her fast, get a bunch of injury out, or you can even run her on injury set and you can probably quite literally fully injure a target all the way down to like half HP, probably in one with one attack with the amount of injury you're gonna get off Valencia. So I think she's actually gonna be really great. She's gonna cycle a lot. Um, you're definitely gonna see play out of her, especially because she has a ignore ER on the S1. And um, just to, because of the um, the change in her effects, her um, their exclusive equipment now also decreases combat radius by 20%. Now, if I'm correct, she also pushes herself by 50%. So this is like a 70% push, uh, like a pseudo 70% push for Alencia. So it's really, really huge. It's a really huge buff for Alencia. And I think it's a really great buff. So Young Star Arcadia's basically just got RNG removed from her passive. Pretty much the only thing that changed here is now her S2, her, um, S2 I think it's her S2 that gives them mortality. Um, now also gives mortality, and instead of a random buff, it's now going to be an attack buff, specifically an attack buff. Just less RNG. And for the artifact here, we have critical hit chance. Um, and that's it. We're on the Unus artifact, and for Fan of Light and Dark, they just completely removed the 30% RNG difference, and now it's just up to 100%. If you don't have that plus 30, I don't think it's going to change that much for you, though. All right, now let's go back to Flan. Now, Flan, a lot of people are very not happy with this, but I think it's actually a decent change because, like, let's be honest, not a lot of people are using her, right? So, um, they changed the steel buff to decrease defense buff, and uh, the soul burn is increased um, defense break chance for and changed it to two turns. Now, yes, you remove the extra turn, and I, that is probably the one nerf I think that is in the kit, but if you read the damage calcs, it's pretty dang insane. So let me just pull up Pflon here as well after we finish this passive. Um, they removed the effectiveness, which is kind of huge, but they moved it to Pillage, and they, she has 70% critical hit resistance. Um, pillage grants... Um, grant Pillage, which um, after attacking steals one buff from the target, applies to heroes only, and increase effectiveness to all allies for two turns. All right, so let's go take a look at Flan and the reason why I think this is gonna be an interesting buff. So first and foremost, of course she loses her effectiveness. So this is honestly a true issue, but the whole S2 change is only a true issue to anyone who builds her super fast. Because if you're building her super fast, you cannot build her with good bulk. But if you build her slow, you can build her with good bulk. Meaning this passive is not so much of a problem for you, right? So, she removes her damage sharing, but if you're running an Arius unit already, then it's a little bit counterintuitive, right? You, it's, oh, there's, you already have damage mitt, she just puts more damage transfer into the tank, I guess. But if you have anti-crit plus a mitigation unit with her, then the anti-crit is actually stronger. And not a lot of people run highest attack, but if they are running highest attack on Selene, this anti-crit is actually better for her because it will actually make sure that she survives the hit. Because as you may know, p Flan is usually not that good into Selene because her, S her S2 proc with her extra, like the non-attack skill, proc Selene goes into p Flan and then you're pretty much dead from there, right? The anti-crit actually helps you survive that. Now in terms of the... Uh, let's talk about the defense break now. The defense break change is actually very interesting, and let me just bring up this page here, which is the reason why I think it's pretty interesting. Now, if we go look up Pirate Captain Flan, uh, where is he? Pirate Captain Flan, right? And let's say you have around like 3,300 attack. I don't know how much I have because I have her on Garrett, of course, but I do have an attack imprint, right? So I'll just say 3,300 attack, right? And you're not going to have any crit damage, obviously. So 
let's say the target defense is average to 1000 let's say it's around 1292 right so as you can see this is how much we're doing right now now remind you that p flan does give her give herself an attack buff before she attacks so give ourselves an attack buff here right and then uh now let's in um so it's usually um let's see here one bomb one burn right if you land both boom boom right and if you're running um uh, Iceria's artifact it should be two bombs because you're going to s1 and proc one of those bombs and since it's a defense break we add the defense break and we have roughly almost 30,000 damage off of that innate and if they have lower defense it goes up to 30,000 if it's roughly like 1300 this is like 27,000 now of course if we lower this this is still a lot this is still a lot of damage so I don't, so the amount of damage she's actually going to be doing is actually a lot more than before. Um, in addition to pillage, you can think of pillage like Cascade. Cascade uh, varies per unit. If it's a single target unit, you only do the fixed damage to one unit. If you do an AoE attack, the Cascade will go into all targets. This is kind of the same thing with pillage. If you ask one first turn with P Flan and proc her pillage, she will give pillage to everyone on the team. And if you follow up with some AOE unit, maybe a LR Crow, um, maybe a Candy, if you don't hit someone with a buff with her S1, if you hit anyone, right, um, you're going to, if it's an AOE attack, you're going to steal one buff from every single target. And then, yeah, you're going to literally steal one buff from every single target. And it's, it kind of works like a pseudo strip, right? Because since you steal it, then it's like a strip, right? So if they all have a muni buff, you do like an AOE attack, some AOE unit, maybe like a S1 into someone who doesn't have a buff, candy salvos, you're going to steal one from every single target. Meaning they'll no longer have a muni buff, you follow up with Flan, go S3, and you start bombing things. Also, give everyone an effectiveness buff is pretty huge. Maybe if you have like a, for instance, a Monk ready to go, that will be pretty cool. Uh, maybe you uh, S2 with Monk, S1 with Flan, and then Monk laps back around, you S3, you're going to steal a buff from everybody. So not only, I don't know if the strip goes first and maybe the pillage is afterwards, but like it's pretty dang cool in my opinion, right? I think it's going to be a pretty interesting one. I That's pretty much all I have to say. Just a little bit of the calcs there or a little bit of like ideas or like theory crafting for what you can use her for. But I just wanted to put that out there because a lot of people are really pissed and thinking it's a nerf. And I really don't think it's a huge uh, a nerf. I think it's just something to get her to be played because let's be honest here, there's probably only like two percent of the of the player base that's actually playing her right now so it's like it will be see higher play it will give more variety to rta and i think it's just a pretty interesting thing to do right so i think p flan's buff is interesting uh and i i I'm, I'm gonna be fun like i'm gonna be like really happy to play her so that's pretty much it for the balance notes um hopefully you enjoyed if you have any thoughts about any of the characters be sure to leave in the comments and that is it for me see you guys soon